Transgender Mafia claims another scalp, and would you believe this time it is female tennis star, one of the best female athletes to ever live, Martina Navratilova, who is also gay and a longtime LGBT activist, but that was no protection from her tweeting the truth. Hey everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is your right angle on the, well, the latest from the outrage mob. Uh, gentlemen, I came across this story this morning on Instapundit, and I have to tell you, this uh, this author for The Spectator, I haven't heard of her before, uh, Julie Bindle, but she wrote that the latest target in the vicious and often violent war being raged by extreme trans activists is one of my all-time heroes, the world tennis champ and LGTB rights campaigner. Uh, and here's the, the tweet itself. She, uh, Martina said, clearly that can't be right. You can't just proclaim yourself a female and be able to compete against women. There must be some standards, and having a penis and competing as a woman would not fit that standard. And of course, the outrage mob on Twitter uh, started at once, forced her to apologize and delete the tweet, and... This is the part that's going to shock you, Bill. The person who led the outrage mob was Dr. Rachel McKinnon, an academic philosopher, transgender activist, and a formerly male competitive cyclist who won a women's event at the UCI Masters Track World Championship. What part of this story do you want to comment on, Bill? Because there's just there's so much meat. I don't even I don't want to lead you in a direction. I just want to set you loose. I'll repeat what I've said a few times on this issue because I think it's important to distinguish, at least have a clear idea what my personal take on this is. If I have a, a guy who was Uncle Bob and he came to the family Thanksgiving dinner one day in a dress and, and asked to be called Aunt Roberta, I'd be more than happy to accommodate him sure. or her. That's, more than happy to. That's just manners. No skin off of my nose. Yep. It's just plain decency and politeness, and that's all there is to it. It wouldn't bother me in the least. The place where I get off the train is where um, Aunt Roberta would insist that she was now, in fact, a biological woman. And for me to agree to that is no longer a question of um, politeness or decency or getting along now. Now you're asking me to lie about what is an objective truth, and I'm not going to do that. That's, that's, that's where I draw the line, not yeah. going there. So if it were I, – I, I say that because I'm going to – I just want to preface what I'm about to say by saying – that this is not something that I just run around bashing people on the heads with. This is the stuff that I deploy when people insist that I believe in something that's not true. Magically believe in something they want to be true and, and not true. And they believe it. They can believe it if they want to. But they're going to insist that I believe it too. What I would have done, I think, if I was Martina Navratilova, is I would have taken... Um, would have taken the fastest 100-meter 100 100 runtime in Olympic history for women, which I'm, I'm pretty sure was Flojo, but I'm not sure. Um, and this is the fastest time that a woman has ever run the 100-meter dash, ever. Ever. And then, and then I would list, you, you will find every college in America has several, and most high schools have at least one or two 16-year-old, 17-year-old, 15-year-old uh, boys that run faster than the, than the fastest woman in the world. They, they are running faster than the fastest woman in the world, at least in their senior year in high school. And by the time they get into college, they're significantly faster. There are millions and millions of young men that run faster than the fastest woman in the world. Now, if I was having this argument with a progressive, she would say, well, I'll bet you Flo Joe can run faster than you can. And I would say, and I'll bet you're right, <laughs> but that's yeah, not absolutely. the point. Uh, and the reason we have, again, I don't run around with this on a placard, but the reason there is a women's competition in the Olympics, because if there wasn't, there wouldn't be any women in the Olympics. With the exception of certain skill-based things, like you potentially you could say diving, for example, you could say things like, you know, uh, uh, but there wouldn't be anybody, there'd be no women weightlifters, there'd be no women runners, there'd be no women uh, shot putters, there'd be none. It's, and, and you don't have to take my word for it, and you don't have to, and you can deny it all you want to. The statistics on finishing times are out there. You look up any college, any high school, most high school meets, pretty much any college meet. Look at the fastest time for the 100 meter dash, and you're going to find a man who runs, or, or five, that run faster than the fastest time that a woman's ever run. And, and, and needless to say, you can extrapolate to other areas too. So the reason that this response, Steve, is so repulsive and, and makes me pull this card, be violently repulsive, 
and 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 this incredible attack on this woman who's been on on their side and and and, is, is, and, and by the way, who's a superb athlete? I don't take a second thing away from her. She's just an absolutely oh, yeah. superb athlete. But she's enough of an athlete to understand biomechanics, understand muscle density, understand all of these things. So I just realized that that this is the most glaring example of what the entire progressive movement is based on. And that is based on the idea that, that if I want something to be true because I feel like it should be true, then it is true. And nothing flies in the face of that. They will not allow anything to convince them that if something they want to be true is proven to be false, then they will tear down their own gods and grind them into dust because without this magical belief in these things like this and, and sharing and, and, and green jobs and all the rest of this nonsense, if it wasn't for that, they'd be left in the world where they'd have to prove what they believe in, and, and that's the end of the progressive movement. Yeah, that really is. You know, I, I haven't played tennis since high school, so we're talking about 30 mumble years ago now. But uh, and, and Martina's been retired for, what, 15 years, something like that? Something like yeah, that. Not only would she kick my booty in tennis, I bet I couldn't even return one of her serves. <laughs> I have no doubt about that. So this isn't, oh, all men are better than all women. This is where, at what level do professional uh, and, by, and by the way, Olympic level athletes I, compete? I, uh, being the most aged and obsolete of the trio here, uh, I probably have the clearest memory of the battle of the sexes between mm -hmm. um, um, Billie, uh, Jean King, uh, Billie Jean King and, and, Bobby, and Riggs. Bobby Riggs. Yeah. And um, and it, there was a lot of heat prior to this in this in the in our school. You know, girls are saying the girls going to win, boys are saying boys going to win. Well, Billie Jean King won that match, uh, but even then, it was the best tennis player, best female tennis player in the world at the height of her, absolute at the height of her um, game, against a guy who was not <laughs> super highly ranked it, ten years ago. And we find out now. We find out now that the that the result was rigged. He, we, that yeah, it was he, determined he in advance that he had to lose. Bobby rigs the outcome. Bobby <laughs> rigs the outcome exactly. <laughs> in, in other Scott. words, in other words, I don't know this for sure, but it's entirely possible that this that this fat third rate uh, male tennis old. player, <laughs> yeah, fifty six year old tennis player, could have in fact beaten Billie Jean King, and I suspect that would have been the case. Wow. So, I only say that because there are some realities out there that that are indisputable and you don't have to like them there's a lot of things i don't like i don't like i have to argue with progressives but that doesn't mean that they're not there you have to do it uh scott a couple of things stand out uh i think the first really is the key line i think in martina's tweet was that there must be some standards and standards are either based on objective reality or they're double standards and do you think that's what really gets the ire up of this uh, transgender mafia. My uh, my grandfather, who raised me, um, had to memorize a Longfellow poem when he was in elementary school that began something like, under the spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man, is he with large and sinewy hands, and the muscles on his brawny arms are as strong as iron bands. This poem, apparently anticipated by 100 years, Martina Navratilova's emergence as a uh, tennis player. She's amazing. I mean, if, any, if anybody has the credibility to speak on this issue, it is That's exactly the right. yeah. most manly female tennis player <laughs> who has ever risen to the top ranks on the world scene. Um, and for Martina Navratilova, who, you know, if you just saw her forearms in her prime, you would back oh, away and cross the street if she was approaching you to be able to say that and then to be lambasted by her own people, so to speak, by the people who should, should be her best ideological allies is an absurdity. And yeah, I think that there is a fundamental misunderstanding and uh, among some people, but there's also a distortion, a, an intentional conscious distortion among others, a much smaller group of the elite, who want to make it seem like any difference must imply inferiority or superiority. And you can't have a difference of role, you can't have a difference of capability without implying some sort of existential 
ontological superiority on the part of the person who's different in, in, in a superior way in sports, for example. And so this is, 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 I think, one of the major miscalculations of our era. It's what, in many ways, spawned the worst excesses of feminism, where it was just assumed that a woman's role in nurturing children and in, in raising them up as a, as a strong mother was somehow less important than if she were sitting in a cubicle doing cost accounting for a major corporation. Um, and so if only somehow we could get across in a gracious manner that whatever your gifts or abilities are, um, they are the best, you know, you be the best that you can be. You compete on the field where your talents are most evenly matched. You know, when I was when I was a tennis player in high school, I learned to play tennis in high school. We didn't have any tradition of tennis in my family. <laughs> and uh, we were football people. But um, it, there were only six people who got to play in the matches when you went to another school. And so we were constantly competing to be in the top six. Oh, yeah. And only rarely was I able to get into the top six by beating, you know, sort of the, you know, the second worst guy on the team. Um, and that, you know, if you really want to believe in a society where people are treated as equals and the only measure is your ability to do a job, then you believe that women should compete against women and men should compete against men. Um, now, if some woman emerges in some place, like right now there's a guy who entered a, an international beauty pageant, if a guy can be more femininely pretty <laughs> than a woman and Why answer not? those tough, tough questions from, <laughs> from her interlocutor on the stage, uh, you know, I guess that's okay, who cares? Um, but it, it, it's just sad that we've distorted this to such a degree that people think that that I think I'm better because I can beat a woman in a hundred yard dash. I, I don't think I'm better. I think in that very small micro territory of life, I've managed to excel her. And therefore, why should we ruin her career by having her compete against people who can beat her every time? Yeah, you don't it, feel superior to her because you're taller. No, I mean men are taller than women. It's not a that's not a moral no. superiority. That's why these stories are so it's great, Steve. Biology. Because it's it, it shows you it's not progressives versus conservatives. It's progressives versus reality, and 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 that's why they hate these kind of things so much. Yeah, I think you're right, uh, let, folks. Uh, several years ago, there was a Kevin Williamson article in National Review that I found really touching. It's, it's stuck in my memory for probably four or five years. Now, he was writing about folks with gender dysmorphia, as it's properly called, and the attempted suicide rate for, for people who suffer gender dysmorphia who do not undergo uh, sex reassignment surgery is just a little over 40% attempted mm -hmm. suicide rate. And uh, further, further studies showed that it was not due to discrimination or bullying or anything like that. It's for the heart-wrenching condition of their, their their minds, their actual souls being divorced from the, the status of their own bodies. And these are folks who deserve our sympathy. They deserve our help, our compassion. Couldn't agree more. Anything we can give them. But what was shocking about it, what really pulls your heart, is that the attempted suicide rate for folks with gender dysmorphia who have undergone gender reassignment surgery is just about a point higher so clearly, we aren't doing folks any favors by letting them pretend to encourage uh, the, the illness that they suffer through, through surgical or, or, or chemical means. We're just not helping these folks. And uh, when, when Kevin, in this article, called for our, our sympathy and our compassion, I, I said, yes, of course, of course. But I have to tell you, for the social justice outrage people like uh, Dr. Rachel McKinnon, it's really hard. It's difficult. You make it impossible for me to be sympathetic when you act like such an asshole. And that's your right angle on that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>